All right. So our presentation today is scaling your Amazon advertising for the holidays. So a few things we are going to cover are foundational campaigns to maximize your Amazon advertising coverage, top targeting tips for increasing brand awareness, and then, as you guys know, an Ask Me Anything section on how I can help you improve your strategy. Now, we did put for the holidays on this presentation, but I will be going through all of the campaigns that we look at when we're wanting to basically scale a brand's presence. So it's gonna be an extremely long list and there's gonna be a few quick call outs on different types of strategy and things like that. But hopefully you guys will walk away realizing that there's so much more that you can be doing with your Amazon ads than just having a few manual campaigns or a few auto campaigns. So let's see here, let me pull this chat box back up and make sure you guys can hear me before we go ahead and dive in. All right, the screen is not visible. Let me see here. If you guys can share my screen, can you guys please put a three in the chat right now? A few of you are saying that you are not able to see my screen, but we should be good to go. All right, it does look like you guys can see my screen. I have a few people asking if the presentation will be available afterwards. So we will have a downloadable document with it. I'm not 100% sure if the actual walkthrough of the presentation will be available yet. Just kind of depends on how this goes and how many questions we have at the end. But the way I've structured this walkthrough is I want you guys all to have access to the downloadable PDF afterwards where it's going to link to everything and it's just a great reference point to see what type of campaigns you guys need to be launching. All right, so to get started, the first thing I wanted to cover before we even dive in is Amazon advertising common misconceptions. So these are things I hear all the time in the groups. I get asked these pretty frequently and I wanted to go ahead and clear them before we dive into all of the topics today. So. One of the first things I always hear is that any one ad type is bad. So maybe someone had a bad experience with sponsored display, so they've completely written it off. Maybe their sponsored product, product targeting doesn't perform well for them, so they just decide that it's not gonna work for any of their products. That is a huge misconception. We typically see pretty even performance across all three, depending on you know, our conversion rates and our bid optimizations. The second one, sponsor brands are only for brand awareness. Now, this one is typically heavily perpetuated from Amazon because Amazon pushes sponsored brands for all of their large vendors and large CPG clients. So when they release any data or any recommendations, it's typically, oh, sponsored brands are for branding. No, not at all. If you have brand registries, sponsored brands are a great opportunity for your brand. The third one is, if I don't negate keywords, they will compete. <laughs> if you guys have followed me for a while, then you guys know that I absolutely am against 90% of negating strategies. We rarely negate unless it's for anything to do with campaign structure, brand management, things like that. So another one is, you shouldn't run in phrase and broad. I hear this really often that if you're running in phrase and broad, it defeats the purpose. They're both almost the exact same. Or if I'm running auto, I should only move it to exact. This is a huge misconception if you're running things at scale because you need to run in all three match types. They all three had different purposes and you could have the three keywords, exact same keyword, three different campaigns and three different match types with one ASIN and they're not gonna compete. There's way too many placements on the page for that to happen. Next one, DSP sucks. <laughs> so 70% of the sellers who are large enough to have some type of Amazon advertising rep have probably had some run in with Amazon DSP either through the reps or Amazon's managed DSP. And the experience, especially for OG sellers, is not fantastic. Now, this is a huge misconception because one, if Amazon's managing it, they typically focus more on brand awareness than purchase intent. So there's usually not strong alignment between what the brand wants and what Amazon wants. So although DSP is a very particular ad type that requires a very particular taste and strategy, it does not suck and it can definitely perform extremely well if it's aligned appropriately. Um, the last one is a low ACOS is all that matters. 
So I don't know how many calls that I go on and I'm like, what is your goal for your brand, for your advertising? They're like, oh, I just want 2% ACOS. Like, yeah, you know, in theory, that would be absolutely incredible if we were making that much money. But unless you're ranking number one on every single page for every single keyword and you don't have any competitors, this isn't a great long-term goal. You need to continue to improve your organic rank and win market share. So everything we're primarily focusing on in this presentation is running your ads at scale. So we're going to be talking about different ad types. We can split test against each other and things like that. But if you're a brand owner whose primary focus is a low ACOS, then keep in mind that when I'm recommending these strategies, they may not be best for you. What we do is kind of better AMS is focus on thought leadership and running all of these different ad types and split testing them and figuring out what works best for long-term scale. All right, so Amazon Advertising Basics. Another quick thing to note is in a really healthy account, these are the metrics we typically see. So out of your total sales, 30% of those are typically driven from sponsored ads. That's in a very healthy account. That's what we like to see when we're running an analysis. Now, if I hop into audit an account and I see 90% of their sales are from ads, it tells me that their organic rank is not in a great spot. So it's a great way to kind of check where you are. If you see that, you know, 5% of your total sales are from ads, then that probably means you have a lot of room to grow on the advertising side, which will influence your organic ranking and your market share. Now, across just your advertising sales, what we see is 70% of sales typically come from sponsored products, 20 you know, to 30% from sponsored brands, and 10 to 20% from sponsored display. Now, why we see this drop off in ad share is because sponsored products make up the majority of the page. So they show up all over the product detail page, they show up all over page one and throughout the SERP, and sponsor brands usually only influences the top of the search and the headline search ad, the bottom of the search in three different placements, and then they're now getting three placements on the product detail page. Sponsor display is extremely similar where it typically only shows up directly below the buy box in those two different placements and or on and off platform if you're running some of the new sponsored display ad types. So these are all metrics to kind of keep in mind and it's a great way to audit your account to see where you need to grow more. If you hop in and see 100% of your sales are from sponsored products, you probably have room to invest in your sponsor brands. All right, so getting into the core of the presentation, how we increased a brand sales by 338% in preparation for Q Q4. Easy answer, campaign diversification and testing. Sales increased by 338% and ACOS decreased by 13%. So this brand has actually been on Amazon for around eight years now, I believe. They're one of the original brands in their category and they've just been basically kind of running on what they've always known. So they had a good foundational structure with a few auto campaigns and a few manual campaigns per their products, but they hadn't invested in sponsored display. They hadn't pushed their sponsor brands, sponsor brands video and all these new things. So we went in and that was our primary focus. We looked at all the long tail search terms and things like that. And we launched over 300 campaigns, which help us see this increase. And then because we are diversifying their spend and testing these other ad types, we actually lowered the ACOS. Now, a few things to note here. This is a brand that had no heavy contingencies on spend or ACOS, which allowed us to go in extremely quickly and launch a ton of campaigns. If a brand comes to me and says, I wanna lower my ACOS by 5%, guess what? I'm probably not gonna be launching a ton of campaigns because that's gonna increase your ACOS in the beginning, which is what we did. We had to increase it by 7% in the second month in order to lower it from year to date. So it takes a lot of testing and profitability and scalability must be balanced. So you have to keep these things in mind when we're going through all these ad strategies. You kind of have to analyze your market, analyze your product and figure out what's gonna work best for you. All right, so let's start with basically how this is gonna be formatted. I'm gonna go through every single ad type. I'm gonna have a list of kind of the different campaigns you could run and recommendations for them. Some of them are gonna be redundant because, you know, both ad types, sponsor products and sponsor brands are at its core the same targeting. Sponsor brands video is the exact same. And we're just gonna list out exactly how many campaigns you can be launching and then I'm gonna give quick tips on those. Again, this whole document is meant to be a reference for you to see where you have room to scale. So I wanted to have this in a really 
clean format just for you guys to be able to check into. And then any questions you may have, note them and I'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So sponsored product auto campaigns. One of the most basic ad types, everyone's aware of them, anyone can run them. So if you guys weren't aware, auto campaigns are now broken out in four different targeting types, close match and loose match, complements and substitutes. Two of them influence search terms, two of them influence ASINs. So where that happens is if your ad shows up on the product detail page underneath an ASIN and sponsor products related to, then it's gonna show up in your search term report with the ASIN you converted on, and it's gonna be driven from a complement or substitute targeting. Now you also have close match and loose match, which is the same thing, but within the SERP. So for every single ASIN, we recommend running an auto campaign because it's evergreen keyword research and product research. So it, depending on the account size, we will typically run you know, two auto campaigns per ASIN, one focusing on search terms, one focusing on ASINs, or if it's a majorly focused on profitability account, we'll launch four auto campaigns per ASIN. Now, the reason that we do this is so we can have more control over our scalability of our auto campaigns. So as you guys know, all of our budgets in Amazon advertising are at the campaign level. So when you look at something like this, where you have your multiple targeting groups, you can't control the budget of those specific targeting groups. They are all on the campaign level. So even though you know these are pretty decent ACOSs, I can't give it more budget because it's at the holistic level. So all my budget's probably distributed to substitutes because that's where Amazon thinks it needs to be. So it's a great way to have more scalability. And on the flip side, if this is an ACOS that is unacceptable, then I can lower my bid, lower my budget until loose match gets to 10%. And then I can scale substitutes and close match separately because they're in their own campaign. So that's one of the reasons we look at doing that. And it's a pretty basic principle, but a lot of people don't take the time to launch auto campaigns for every single one of their ASINs. So we love doing this because then we can constantly pull our search term report and collect a ton of data. Now, next thing is sponsor product manual keyword targeting campaign. So this is where we're getting into the fun stuff. So for every single ASIN, we're gonna wanna launch multiple manual keyword targeting campaigns. And here's just some of the strategies we focus on. So if we have a product that we wanna influence the rank on, or even if it's ranked on number two and three, and we wanna try to get to number one, we're gonna take those three or four strong keywords we wanna rank on, we're gonna put them in their own campaign, bid on them an exact match, and focus on top of search increases. So for some of our larger brands that have the budget, we've spent as much as like $23 on a CPC in order to influence our ranking. And we can do that by putting them in their own campaign so we can analyze the performance separately. Because if we take those ranking keywords and throw them in with 300 keywords, your total ACOS is gonna be skewed and you're not gonna wanna give that campaign more budget. But if you create its own campaign, that means you can set that aside and be like, I am giving $50 a day to focusing on this ranking strategy. Now, why this is a core focus for us is because at the end of the day, the more conversions you drive for any one keyword, the more likely you are to increase your organic rank. You know, whether that's from external traffic, whether that's organic, whether that's ads, it is a fundamental principle of Amazon ranking. So that's why we set up that strategy. Now, <laughs> keyword research. So this is a fun one. We have multiple different types of keyword research we run per ASIN. One of them is use like utilizing merchant words because merchant words allows you to only pull a list of seed keywords, which means let's say I'm trying to advertise for purple pin. If I type in purple pin into merchant words, they're going to give me a list of search terms that include purple pin. So it's going to be like phrase match. It's purple pin for kids, for adults, purple pin for college, things like that. Helium 10 is great because it's gonna give me relevant keywords based on set parameters. So as you guys know, you could go in and set different parameters to get relevant keywords. Um, brand analytics is amazing as well because you can pull directly from Amazon. So you can go in there and look at the data they're gonna give you per ASIN from Amazon. So all of these are things that our different account executives use for keyword research methods. Now we do typically launch all of these keyword research methods by broad phrase or exact. So there's you know, not a huge reason to do this other than exact match, it's typically your most profitable because your bid ops is able to adjust the bid directly on the keyword. So purple pin, you're only gonna be optimizing the bid for purple pin. Now broad and phrase, you're gonna cast a wider net and it may be you no know, purple pin for college students when in reality you have a little kid's pin, things like that. So broad in its own campaign, we usually set a little bit lower bids 
phrase in their own campaign, a little bit higher bids, and then exact match. So that's another really long list of keywords right there that you can be launching. Um, next thing that we like to use is Amazon suggested keywords. So this typically isn't gonna do fantastic on a launch because as you guys know, if you pull a manual campaign on a brand new ASIN and you look at the suggested keywords, it's not near as clean as doing the exact same thing for a ASIN that has history. So if you have history, then we love looking at the Amazon suggested keywords. Again, broad phrase and exact, three different campaigns. Uh, it's a quick and easy way for quick wins. Um, I believe Sean Smith first taught us that one and it's really, really scalable. So we like that strategy. Branded. So the reason I put phrase and exact is because if you bid on any of your branded terms in broad, sometimes you may show up for non-branded terms due to broad, broad match. So if I have something that's like, coke drink i may show up for drink or diet coke drink and that's not really that clean of alignment so we bid on branded and phrase and exact and then competitor targeting we do bid on all of our competitor keywords yes this can get expensive but that's what good bid management is for if you set low enough bids you may not get a ton of traffic but you may win some profitable sales when your competitor goes out of out of budget the last one is the search term report so Although it's on the last of this list, that's primarily because you need data to have a good search term report. This is probably one of the most important keyword research strategies because you already have the data. It's not pulled from a tool. It's not a recommendation. It is what you have actually converted on. So we do have some videos on this. It was a bit much to kind of add into this presentation, but pulling your search term report filtering by your orders and looking at, you know, your top sales driving search terms, or maybe your search terms that don't do as fantastic, but have opportunity to win more market share. Go ahead and dive into all of those because those are gonna be an incredible way to scale. We typically look at doing this, you know, depending on the size of the account, we can run the strategy quarterly or even weekly if we really have a lot of room to scale. So highly recommend starting there if you have a ton of data. Now, that is only keyword targeting. And I want to pull a quick example. So this is for three products. They're all the exact same, just different pack sizes. We had 710 search terms and ASINs that drove at least one sale. So this is why it's so beneficial to look at all these strategies. Yes, it may not be you know, the number one highest traffic keyword, which is gonna drive the most volume and probably be the most expensive, but when you dive into the long tail keyword research and the competitor keyword research, there are 710 different ways to convert for the exact same product, <laughs> which is kind of insane. Because if I think of you know 700 different ways to say soccer ball or search for soccer ball, I could not list that many. But it's really enlightening to see what it does when you dive into this. And you can see in the last 30 days, a lot of these don't even have a ton of clicks. It's not a lot of data. So it's just incremental sales that are being driven. And those incremental sales really add up in the long run and their CPCs are typically much cheaper because they're much less competitive because no one's doing this kind of research. So this is the value of doing this. As you can see here, 536 of those terms were unique terms. Um, there's a few duplicates in there just due to different campaigns that are showing up on different places, maybe on page one versus page three and things like that. All right, so now we have sponsored product manual product targeting campaigns. <laughs> this is another fun one that is going to be broken out into multiple different options. So when you go to run a sponsored product campaign, if you're in manual, they do have product targeting capabilities. So these show up as the sponsored products related to directly under the product detail page. Um, they can influence elsewhere as well. So the first thing you're gonna be showing is category targeting. Now there's multiple campaigns you can run just within category targeting. You can run, you know, SP, CAT, suggested, where you're literally taking Amazon suggested category because they seem to have some relevancy, so that means someone probably converted, and run campaigns on their category suggestions. Now, we typically don't run multiple campaigns within a category. We'll do one suggested category per campaign. Again, this is for scalability reasons. If you have 30 different suggested categories running in one product targeting campaign, it's gonna skew your overall ACOS and you're not gonna be able to scale what's working. What you're gonna to have to do is just turn off categories even though they could perform well with bid offs. So we create unique campaigns for all these strategies. 
Another category targeting is to utilize reviews. So basically you're gonna look at all your competitors and whoever you have better reviews or more reviews than, launch a campaign focusing strictly on that. Price point, exact same thing. Look for anyone that has a higher price point than you and target them with an ad. Put price point in the campaign name so you know exactly what to expect. Similar categories. So this is a really fun suggestion because as you guys know, 90% of our ad types are pay per click. So if someone's not too interested, they're probably not gonna click on our ad. We already know they have purchase intent. So again, if I have a purple pin, this is a great opportunity to target art supplies. Because it's a similar category, but not gonna be as competitive if I was just targeting pins and they're just looking at pins. The goal is to really kind of bring someone through that funnel and get them to purchase your product that may be in market for art supplies. Now, category targeting, again, is more up the funnel because it's casting a wider net. It's very similar to auto campaigns where you're collecting data. And now we have product targeting where we can select exactly what ASINs we want to target. So a few of the strategies that we run, again, this is all individual targeting, is defensive product targeting. So we're gonna bid on all of our own products. Again, the goal of this is if someone's looking at our product detail page for our own products and they scroll down, instead of seeing all of our competitors sponsor products related to, they're gonna see our other products. So not only does it keep consumers aware of our brand, but it's a great way to cross sell our own products. Second strategy is cross selling. So if I have pin, I'm gonna be targeting paper products because we know that if someone has paper, they need some type of writing utensil. Brand awareness, again, moving up the funnel. If I have a pin, I could target college supplies because we can assume that they're gonna need something for note taking. Now with those, you're gonna wanna have lower bids because your conversion rate's probably not gonna be as high because they're not as direct as someone searching for a pin. Top products, so this is a strategy that we utilize in Better AMS. We actually have a tool built out for this purpose but what we do is we take one keyword and we're gonna scrape all of the top products on page one for this keyword and we're gonna serve them with a product targeting ad. Now the benefit of this is it's gonna be usually much less cheaper than bidding on the number one keyword. But we're gonna get the same benefit because we're gonna show up directly below all of the products that are already winning for that number one keyword. So we're gonna piggyback off all the traffic for whoever's ranking in one, two, three, four, and five. So this is one of the strategies we run at scale, and this is one of the strategies that does absolutely incredible during the holidays, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then the last strategy again, search term report. If you have auto campaigns running, you're gonna have a lot of ASINs in your search term report. Pull them out, figure out what's converting well, and put them into a product targeting. So just with sponsored product, product targeting, that's opportunity for nine campaigns per ASIN when you have them broken out this way. Now again, we break things out this way so it's more scalable. If it's performing terribly within the first 24 hours, cut our budget, cut our bids, and collect data slowly. If it's performing well, we can scale it. You know, I would never recommend, like I mentioned in the bottom, throwing a thousand different products in a campaign or a thousand different keywords in a campaign and spending a ton of money up front. The benefit of Amazon is we can test small and scale as things perform better. So set low budgets and low bids. If you don't get impressions at your bid, Increase your bid. That's pretty much as simple as it is right there. All right, let's see here. So here's another quick example. So this is one of the accounts we have. I pulled the search term report in the last 30 days. We had over 1,000 different ASINs that we converted on. So that is from different product targeting ads in the last 30 days. Again, a lot of benefit in running these. They're typically quite a bit cheaper. They can drive a lot of value if you're targeting the number one organically ranked competitor. And you don't have to compete head, in, head to head for the number one sponsored product placement for your top keywords. Instead, we're gonna target the people who are already there. So this is a really strong strategy. And again, it works incredible during Q4 or Prime Day or the holidays. So that covers pretty much the bulk of sponsored products. Quick tips here, it's all in the bid optimization. So some people are gonna be like, you know, I'm bidding on my competitor named Pepsi and we're just performing terribly so it doesn't work. I'm like, well, yeah, you're not gonna convert well in someone else's brand name. What you can do is lower your bid and then you'll be profitable even though you're not gonna get a ton of impressions. There's a chance that they're gonna run out of budget. And when they run out of budget, your bid's gonna be the next lowest because it's an auction model. So you do have opportunity to win incremental sales. 
Another one, don't run multiple ad groups in campaigns. So I have a slide for this at the very end. Didn't wanna to go too in, deep, in depth with it, but we run one ad group per campaign for the exact same reason as the auto campaigns I walked through earlier. If you run multiple ad groups, you have no control over where your budget's going. Amazon has that control. So it's really hard to scale 10 to 20 different ad groups if they're all performing differently. Ideally, you take one that's 10% and you give it more budget, and you take one that's 70% and give it less budget. Doesn't quite work like that. So one ad group per campaign. Um, separate out branded terms. This is probably one of the, if not the biggest mistake I see with all of our large vendors and CPG clients. They have their branded terms mixed in with their categorical terms. So when you look at their ACOS, it's like, oh, it's a 10% on a categorical campaign. And I'm like, go in, click the search term tab. And I'm like, no, you're only converting on your brand name. So you're not actually driving new to brand sales. So if you're creating campaigns, put your branded terms in their own campaign so they don't skew your data. Because of course, if someone is searching for your brand name, they're probably gonna convert and it's gonna be a much lower ACOS. Um, don't aggressively negate anything. So for those of you that have been following me, this is one of the probably more controversial things that I say, but one of the worst habits I see in accounts is they just start negating things like crazy instead of using bid management. And there's really, no benefits in negating. If you, if on the flip side, you just optimize your bid, you still have a chance to drive sales. So if you negate, you're cutting off the opportunity for sales. And what are you telling Amazon by doing that? The only time that we do look into negating is if, you know, I sell an iPhone charger and I'm getting clicks for an Android charger. That is an opportunity to negate because there's probably not a lot of crossover there. Or if I'm in an apparel category or a highly branded category, sometimes we will negate for branded campaigns, all of our non-branded things like that. So um, last one, only run multiple, multiple ASINs in a campaign if they're heavily aligned. So this is another thing I see, like people start auto campaigns with 20 of their products and they're all completely different. Like they all may be kitchen products, but they're not that aligned. This is again, not that fantastic of a strategy because you can't control the budget. So we typically run product grouping so if they're an apparent child we will often put them into a campaign until we figure out who the winner is and then we'll pull the winner out and start campaigns just for the winner so ideally it's one asin per campaign per ad group but sometimes when you have parent child it doesn't hurt to put them together because the consumer is going to be driving driven to the listing with all the products anyways all right so the fun thing about sponsored brands is every single one of those strategies I just covered other than auto campaigns needs to be applied for sponsor brands as well. So all of the strategies I went over were product targeting and keyword targeting campaigns and all the different strategies that we run there can be run with sponsored brands. Now, <laughs> where that gets exponentially more complex is the fact that sponsored brands take a lot more work and there's a lot more split testing that can be done. So if you take all those strategies and multiply them by the things that need to be split tested, it gets really overwhelming really fast. But in general, one of the things that we're kind of gonna look at, if we're running those keyword strategies I discussed earlier, we need to figure out if a landing page is better or a store page is better. And we need to look at running sponsor brands videos with the exact same keyword targeting strategies. So product targeting, same thing. When you have any of your sponsor brand campaigns, you need to be running category targeting with all of the research methods I mentioned earlier, as well as product targeting. Now to dive in a little bit deeper with sponsor brands campaigns, this is why they are so complex. So the first thing that you need to decide when running a campaign is whether or not you wanna to drive to your product collection or a store spotlight. Once you select product collection, you're gonna be asked store page or landing page. And then you're gonna have targeting and landing page alignment because you have to write copy, you have to figure out what you're targeting, what products are gonna be in your headline search ad. And then you have custom image beta and copy opportunities there as well. So this is where we typically see the biggest issue with sponsored brand campaigns. You know, when we look at our performance across the board, the ACOS is typically within 3% of sponsored products. Sometimes it's lower if we're in a low competition category. Sometimes it's higher if you know, you're competing against a big CPG company that's only running sponsored brands. But in general, if you compare the two performance, it should be you know, within three to 5% of each other. If not, you have issues with your sponsored brand creation or your optimization. So to get into more specifics here, 
when you go to launch a sponsored brand campaign, one of the biggest things you can do is align your copy with your targeting. So when you have the ability to write copy in a headline search ad, you need to make it align with the keywords that you've uploaded to target. So again, if we're sticking with, um, let's say we have soccer cleats, shin guards, and soccer goals. All three of them are gonna be shown in my headline search ad. If I'm targeting the keyword soccer goals, I need to put soccer goals for 3v3 or soccer goals for little kids in my headline search ad because that's going to increase my click-through rate and potentially my conversion rate because it's very aligned. Now, yes, this is going to get super incremental because then again, you need to do the same thing with your soccer cleats. If you're only bidding on the term soccer cleats, you need to write your copy that have something with soccer cleats. And again, it's going to increase your click-through rate. So you have to create small batches of keyword targeting to really run this strategy. Um, that's where we kind of mentioned broad versus specific. That is very specific. Now, if I'm targeting the keyword soccer supplies, I can have all of those products showing in my headline and I can write my copy to be more broad because I know that the consumer who's typing in soccer supplies doesn't know what they're going to purchase like the consumer who's talking in, typing in soccer cleats. So those are things we look at with sponsored brand ads is the alignment and how broad versus specific we want to go. We look at branded versus non-branded, same thing when our copy is going to be adjusted if it's branded versus non-branded. And now this is a big announcement that hasn't really been made across Amazon, but you're now allowed to actually call out if you have a deal or a coupon running in your headline search ad and your deals. So in the past, if you tried to write copy with either of these, it would get denied because it was a time sensitive promotion you can now say those things. So it's still pretty specific on your headline. Like I don't think you can say 5% off, but I think you can say deal on this, one of our best deals on this product, which is unique because we used to not be able to say best either. But if you dig in a little deeper on those, you'll probably get approvals through your lightning deals and today's deals throughout Q4. So definitely look into those and figure out what you're able to get away with because that is a very new announcement that's been made internally. So they have shifted that focus. Um, one thing they did mention is you have to have your campaign running within the time frame of the deal, but we were able to get them running without an end date. So it just depends on how many time that you wanna to continue to resubmit those things. Uh, another big thing is aligning your landing page with your targeting. So when I say landing page, I mean specifically whether or not you want to drive to a store page or a landing page of just a particular set of ASINs that you select. We recommend running to a store page if it's broader targeting. If someone types in vitamins and I have a store page full of all my different vitamins, that's a great opportunity to drive into my store page. You can cross sell, show brand awareness, and let them know what you're about. Now, if someone types in probiotic supplements, I probably don't want to drive them to a cluttered, complex store page. I want to drive them specifically to a landing page of probiotic supplements because that's exactly what they want. So that's some alignment issues that we typically see with sponsor brands as well. Utilize custom image beta. So this has been rolled out for around eight months. Originally, it was only on the product detail page. Potentially in mobile is where we were seeing it initially. Now it's been rolled out to the headline search ads. So in the last few weeks, we have seen a major push with custom image beta being in the headline search ad. And I'm gonna show examples of it. These are fantastic because they increase click-through rate, great opportunity to cross sell your products with an amazing lifestyle image and potentially make them holiday related. <laughs> but I'll show you some examples of that in the next few slides. Next one, targeting small batches of relevant keywords. We pretty much discussed that with our copy. If I'm selling a purple pin, my whole headline needs to be covered with pins, and then I need to target purple pin, have my copy purple pin. If I'm selling a blue marker, then I need to have very specific blue marker products in my headline search ad. Uh, run Sponsor Brands Video. So Sponsor Brands Video has been released since October. I believe we've driven over a million dollars worth of sales from this ad type alone. Now, the main issue in the beginning was it was only showing up on mobile. Now it's showing up in the very middle of search. It does incredible, it gets lots of impressions. It is still a pay-per-click model, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. All right, so here's a great example of my copy that I kind of mentioned of making high alignment. So if I type in red hair dye, first thing you see, red hair dyes, cruelty-free and semi-permanent. This is great because there's a lot of alignment. They're only showing their red products, and they're showing a competitive advantage, all in 50 keywords. Now, some people throw their brand, brand name in their headline search ad because I believe it's the, you know, the misconception that sponsored brands are only for branded. But you're just wasting keywords at that point because you do get the logo and the brand name directly below. 
Men's sweatpants, another great example, men's sweatpants with zipper pockets. Now, if this exact ad was showing up for women's sweatpants, that would not be high alignment. No consumers would click on it potentially because if they typed in women's, they wouldn't wanna see men's. So make sure that the keyword you're uploading isn't a list of 300 keywords because then you're not gonna have alignment and you're just gonna get wasted clicks or no clicks at all. So that's another good call out. All right, custom image beta. So this is what that looks like live. This is what it looks like on the product detail page. Interesting thing, if you hover over this on Amazon, you do see the copy, but you have to hover over. It doesn't showcase like it does up here. This is what it looks like in the top of search. This is what it looks like on mobile. It takes up a huge part of the screen. On mobile, it's 50% of the screen. On desktop, it's probably around 30 to 40% of the screen. So I would go in and get these creatives made and get them uploaded because it's increasing the click-through rate across the board. And since it is a sponsored brand ad, it's a great opportunity to cross sell. So you can see that Kiss My Keto here is running multiple keto products or Anchor or whatever this brand is, not Anchor, is showcasing their multiple products. So great opportunity to show everything you have, not just your main product. And it's a great opportunity to kind of make slight adjustments that may be aligned with the timing. So this is kind of a party hat, but what if it was, you know, a Christmas tree or something like that, or a party hat with Christmas colors? It's a great way to kind of showcase what you have for the time being and, you know, attract the customer's attention. So love custom image beta so far. Uh, this is another one that is pretty low key right now. It has been moved to desktop, but sponsored, sponsored brand store spotlight. So when you go to create a sponsored brand headline ad, it asks you if you want to have this option. I will say for smaller brands, it doesn't typically make sense because what it does is drive to the sub page of your store where it does fan, do fantastic is if it's, you know, top of the funnel, very brand awareness focused keywords. So let's say, for example, someone just typed in Adidas. They didn't type in anything else. This would be a great ad because it would show them all of the different sub pages we have. Or maybe they typed in Adidas workout. All three of these sub pages, you know, can work well for that keyword. And what's kind of cool is you could write the copy here. So it's a great way to show the multiple products and change the actual copy of the headline. And then again, it's driving directly to your sub pages. So this will drive to this sub page, this sub page, and this sub page. So um, don't typically run this at scale for kind of our smaller brands without fantastically built out sub pages because it is very much top of the funnel, very much brand awareness, but it looks great. So <laughs> that, that accounts for something, I guess. Um, sponsor brands video on search. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly because I know it's a hot topic and you guys have probably seen a ton of webinars on this. But sponsor brands video is amazing because it shows up in the middle of search. We are seeing some beta rollouts of it showing up on the product detail page for large DSP brands. What that tells us is they're testing the placement and there is possibilities that's going to be rolled out to us, which means more impressions. Um, coolest thing about this ad type is it is pay per click. So what that means is you can target very broad keywords that maybe don't have a lot of alignment with your product and you're not gonna get charged if someone views your commercial, like in traditional video marketing. You're only getting charged if someone clicks on it and most people don't click on commercials unless they like them. So for example, let's take you know this keto-friendly office snack. They have opportunity to maybe target protein shakes, which is not aligned whatsoever, but you can assume if someone's targeting protein shakes or looking for them, they're in the health market they may be interested in this product. What's cool about it? You're not getting charged for everyone who views protein shakes and then sees your ad. You're only getting charged when people click. So video and search is incredible for top of the funnel awareness and it takes up half the page, looks fantastic. Um, here are the guidelines. Again, this is a reference point for later, so I'm not gonna go over them too much. Biggest call outs, it's a single ASIN landing page. So even though it's sponsored brands, you're only driving to one ASIN. For now, uh, it's been rumored that we're gonna get the opportunity to drive to multiple ASINs or a store page, so keep that in mind. Um, we now have the ability to launch without sound. None of the videos autoplay with sound. So if you're having videography done, do not rely on audio. Uh, create multiple campaigns for different targeting types. So every single strategy I recommended earlier for keyword targeting needs to be ran with video and search. You need your ranking campaigns, your search and report campaigns, your Helium 10, your merchant orders, your brand analytics, all those can be ran for video. If anything, you can be more targeting top of funnel traffic. So more aggressive with your video and search. CPCs are typically lower. Um, I think 
on average in our account, they're probably like $1.30, but we're in some pretty competitive categories. For non-competitive categories, it's less than a dollar with fantastic conversion rates. Prepare and test now. Video is not going away. If anything, it's getting more competitive. So get your ads up and running ASAP. Plan for more creatives, more impressions, and more targeting types within video. All right. Let's see here. Sponsored brand keyword targeting campaigns. So all I did was copy the slides from sponsored products because I wanted you guys to kind of, again, reference all the different strategies that can be ran per campaign. And what's, again, more complex is all of these strategies can be split tests with the different variables of copy, store page, landing page, video and search, all of those. So you can see real quickly how many campaigns this could get. So across video and you know regular landing pages, that's like an additional 32 campaigns right there. Now again, are we gonna go and launch 32 campaigns on an account that's focused on profitability? No. What we're gonna do is analyze the market and see what we think is gonna perform best. So if it's a large CPG brand, we're gonna drive traffic to the store page. If it's a private label brand that's you know focused on profitability, we're gonna get video and search running for our keyword research and suggested campaigns. Keep all of these in mind and kind of cross-reference what you think is gonna work best. All right, product targeting campaigns, exact same thing we just discussed. This is not gonna to relate to video yet, but it is sponsored brand product targeting. So for the custom image beta showing up on the product detail page, run these strategies and target all of your competitors with a sponsored brand product targeting ad. One thing we have seen is if you go to the product detail page and you see the brands related to section, that has now been moved up occasionally above sponsor products related to. So they're definitely putting more pressure and basically getting more views to your sponsor brand's product targeting. Key callouts, again, it's driving to multiple ASINs. Um, so make sure you have great copy that's broader and make sure you have a good custom image beta. Sponsored display. So this is another one that we can run through pretty quickly. Sponsored display is probably one of my favorite ad types in general and favorite ad types as we head into holiday shopping. What's cool about it is it shows up directly below the buy box in these two placements. It is not to be confused with DSP, although DSP does show up in these two placements as well and is very similar. Sponsored display is within your own advertising console. There are no minimums and you can run them yourselves. DSP is still a display platform, but you cannot run it yourself. You have to either work with Amazon or work with an agency provider like Better AMS and we are able to run them, but there is typically a minimum because we're paying for impressions with DSP versus sponsored displays 75% of the time pay per click. So this is where it shows up. It is a great way to win market share, which does absolutely incredible during the holidays because a lot of people are shopping around. So love this. Um, some of the campaign types we can run just for sponsored display. So you have your category targeting again, which is suggested reviews, price point. It's really no different than the other targeting types. Product targeting, again, exact same strategies. But we also have audience targeting with sponsored display. What's amazing about this is it's a great way to dip your toes in with DSP. What's not as fantastic about it is it's typically more brand awareness. So if anyone searches you know, for a product similar to ours, we're gonna get served an ad. If anyone views our product, we're gonna serve them another ad. If anyone purchases our product, we're gonna serve them another ad. So there is a lot of opportunity for these to do incredible, but they are more top of the funnel. So for these three, we typically start with lower budgets, and lower bids and kind of dip our toes in. For these, you have the search term report data. You have the data from your sponsor product, product targeting, sponsor brand product targeting, pull your search term reports and figure out what you should target. Again, the benefit of them is that they show up here rather than here. Sponsored products show up here. Sponsored brand product targeting shows up below it. Sponsored display product and category targeting show up here, which is absolutely incredible because it's directly below your competitor's buy box. So if you have a price point advantage, a better product, you know, better reviews, run these ads. We do have the opportunity, again, to write copy. So we'll get into that in a little bit but you can now add copy again to your product display ads, which means you're able to showcase a competitive advantage throughout your copywriting, which is really cool. Now here's kind of a quick way, again, for a reference point. If you're going to run sponsored display, know that purchases, individual products, categories are more purchase intent. Searches and views are more for awareness. So
So expect, you know, your highest ROAS probably down here, lowest ACOS. And as you move up the funnel, performance isn't going to be as fantastic because you're trying to make people aware of your brand. Oh, one second. Um, here's a quick screenshot. So I've mentioned this a few times. Sponsored display does incredible during the holidays. One of the top performing ad types across the board during the holidays. And it's because we can piggyback off of everyone else's traffic. Anyone goes out of stock, run a sponsored display ad on their product. So that way, even though they're looking at the listing that's out of stock, they're going to see yours directly below. Target all of your top competitors because people are window shopping. They're looking for different brands that they may like more. They're not just going to click into a listing and purchase. They're going to, you know, compare price points. They're going to compare color variations, things like that. Highly, highly recommend these during peak shopping times. They do amazing. Um, sponsor display quick tips. Use your current data again. Anything in your search term report that starts with B0 is something you've already potentially converted on. Filter by top sales, filter by what's driving a lot of value for you, and relaunch these in sponsor display. If you launch sponsor product product targeting, sponsor brand product targeting, sponsor display product targeting, they're not all three going to compete. What's gonna allow you to do is win more placements on your competitor's product detail page, uh, create unique campaigns for targeting strategy. Again, like we mentioned below, don't just upload a thousand different ASINs into a product targeting campaign. Create unique campaigns for strategy. Utilize the copy feature. It does amazing. You don't have to put it on there though. And I will say sometimes there's formatting issues with the ad if you do use the copy feature. Still not cleaned up. Uh, utilize the new features to move up the funnel. So we now have basically more control over our remarketing. So that is a great feature to look into your account immediately. Our director of DSP, Kyle, actually found it in accounts, I think like 48 hours ago. And it's very new, but it allows us to have more control. And finally, this is a great way to dip your toes into DSP. So again, for those who have had bad experiences with DSP, or for those who aren't familiar with DSP, DSP is shopper marketing <laughs> at its core. Everything we do within Advertising Console is just advertising. We're basically selecting keywords of products we want to show our ads on. DSP is utilizing shopper, shopper marketing. We're looking at buyer behavior habits. We're looking at you know, different contextual targeting. We're looking at competitor analysis, and we're going to target every single competitor who views this person but doesn't purchase all these complex situations. We're getting some of those opportunities on sponsored display, so it's really allowing us to dip our toes in there. So it's a great way to figure out, you know, how well you're converting on some of these more top of the funnel ad types. Um, holiday quick tips. So after taking a look at everything we have here, the biggest thing I can do is basically have like go to your advertising console and have a quick analysis. Look for your top keywords. Do you have one competitor that's paying $20 a click for the number one headline search ad? If so, you probably wanna run sponsored display on that competitor, because you know they're getting a lot of traffic for running that headline search ad. So take all the tips that I kind of recommended, figure out where you have holes and gaps in your ad strategy and try to fill them. Again, start with low bids and low budgets and scale once you have data. If you take all these strategies, launch 50 campaigns, set $100 a day budgets, it's gonna get expensive real fast and you're not gonna have enough time to collect data. So start slow. Um, quick tips for specifically for the holidays, adjust copy for your deals and promotions. Like I mentioned, we now have the ability to write holiday and promotion specific copy has not been widely announced. Create specific headline search ads just for this. Drive them to you know a deals page you have on your store. Product targeting everywhere. I've mentioned that like 17 times, I think. <laughs> Holiday specific imagery where allowed. What I'm pretty much referencing here is custom image beta. You cannot say happy holidays. You could potentially run a imagery with green and red graphics. Run DSP or remarketing to take advantage of all your ad spend. This is, this is a specific recommendation. Um, it's definitely gonna take more ad spend. It's probably definitely more for the advanced sellers, but let's say I spend, I'm planning on spending $100,000 this November. If you know not all of that spend is going to turn into a conversion because that would be 100%, what we want to do is take advantage of that ad spend and remarket every consumer who views our listing. So we're taking 100K and using it to drive traffic to our listing. Any consumer who doesn't convert is a loss. If we're running DSP or sponsored display remarketing, we can make the most of it 
and basically take that consumer data and continue to show them an ad. Where this is going to do fantastic is for giftable items, high price items that have a longer consideration period, or replenishables and consumable items where we want someone to continuously repurchase. So benefit of this is basically utilizing that consumer data and retargeting them with ads. The last big one, which will probably come up in the question section, is budget adjustments and bid optimization. So I typically do not recommend making crazy bid optimizations as we head into Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Don't cut bids, don't get really crazy with bidding unless it's for a specific strategy like winning number one 100% of the time. Uh, do make budget adjustments though. Increase your budgets on everything performing well, even things that aren't performing that well if they're important like your ranking campaign. So those are the biggest holiday quick tips. And yeah, I am done seven minutes early for our first section. So if you guys have any questions based off everything that we talked about, put them in the chat. I'll start going through some of the questions that came up along the way and we can go from there. Let me see.